Hi, welcome to this Game Master tutorial where we will be creating this pistol. I'll be going through the entire process from blockouts all the way to the final renders. Small disclaimer, this will not be a tutorial for complete beginners, so I will assume you already know how to use Blender. If not, there are plenty of great tutorials out there to follow for you to get used to the software. Quick overview of this tutorial series. We will begin with a basic modeling stage that I often call blockout, where the major shapes are created. Then we will turn the basic shapes into high poly and add more detail. After that, we will optimize the mesh and get it ready for exports and baking in Marmoset. And to finalize, we will create some simple materials in Substance Painter and bring the mesh and textures back into Blender for some renders. All right, that's enough talk. Let's get into it. Okay, let's begin. I'm gonna collapse some windows. I'm gonna name this to block out. I'm gonna drag and drop the first aligned view. Drag and drop the uh, reference images, which I will link as well. Uh, I will also link the pure ref that I'm using, along with these images that you can also use if, if you want. This is the left side, this is the right side. I'm going to quickly align the images, make sure they, they are aligned. So when I do mirror it, when I, when I work on the opposite side, I can add accurate detail wherever it's needed. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it would help if it was. Yeah, something like that will, will do. I like to disable the perspective view on my reference images so that when I'm working in perspective, I don't actually see them. Also, we're going to hide the left. I only make right visible from the right. I'm going to do this by disabling front. And we're going to do the same for the left, but we're going to disable back. Or maybe front. Yeah, front. Set the opacities to 0.5. So now when we switch between views, we can we can see both sides of the gun. We'll also select this and disable them so I can't actually select them. It will help for in the future when I don't have to accidentally click and move it and realign it again. Oh yeah, I forgot to enable the, the screen keys so you can see what I'm actually clicking. For some reason they're not where I want them to be so I'm going to have to quickly fix that. Uh, there you go. Okay, that's just not good now, is it? Uh, okay, here are the screen keys, so you can actually see what I'm, what I'm doing. And I'm also going to quickly show you the uh, my add-ons that I'm currently using. So curve tools, animal, export, project time are not really needed. We will mostly use loop tools, ball tool, and UV pack master, which I think it might be a free download. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but it's not that expensive and it's a really great add-on. Would recommend. I'm sure, uh, I think there's a UV pack master three out, so it should be even better. If, if you're not using pack master, you're still able to unwrap, but just less efficiently. But it's not big of a deal if you don't have it. All right. So now that the uh, reference material is set up in the uh, in Blender, we can hit save and begin with the uh, with the model. I'm gonna begin with a slide. I'm gonna create a circle, 32 vertices. Name it slide. Rotate 90. Now, if we look at the reference material real quick, as you can see, because it's a cylinder, cylindrical shape, we can pretty much get the depth of the model relatively accurate. We just need to align the, the circle, as you can see, the middle of the circle is around this area. So that's where I'm going to try to align. The circle here. Let's get it down. Extrude forward. I forgot to the disable back face culling, that's important as well. So you can see which way your normals are facing. 
Okay. I'm gonna quick. Uh, gonna quickly slide this upwards, so it's in line with the edge. Delete the bottom part. Make sure downwards. And then that should be the basic shape of the of the frame. Actually, gonna quickly split this in half because the 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 rear part is gonna be slightly more complex. We're gonna focus on the front bit at, at the moment. Gonna add some loop cuts here to allow the shape to flow properly. So you can see the other cylindrical part under the, the slide is roughly the same diameter as the outer barrel. So we can guesstimate the uh, the size of it. And add another circle, this time 26 vertices. Move it down slightly. Let's say about that. I'm gonna cut it in the middle. Extrude upwards. Forgot to quickly mention we're gonna enable uh, snapping as well. So vertex and active. And now with the selection we can hit GZ to move on the, the Z axis and then hold control to snap to whatever vertex we want to make it straight. Make sure it's straight by scaling it at zero. Just gonna move this up a little bit, and there we go. Maybe the under part. Also, to make life a bit easier, I am gonna delete half of the model and activate a mirror modifier and enable clipping so that you can't pass over to the other side of the mesh, which helps a lot. I'm going to quickly connect these up. Give this a triangle here. Add a loop cut. Go front view. Give it some curvature. Not much, but enough to let the shapes flow. That should be fine. I think it goes back a bit a bit inwards of the gun. So we're just gonna do that. We're gonna extend this back out again. I mean whilst we're at it we could add the uh the barrel hole I guess. So in the early blockout stages you can add angles, triangles, it doesn't matter too much, even in the high poly. I often work with uh, end guns and triangles and I don't really have issues with it. So that should be fine. There should also be another little hole here for the recall, uh, recall spring guide. It's a lot smaller, so maybe around here, I reckon. So if, if you get an issue like this, let me just recreate it. Where it kind of creates one huge face instead of going around it. Easy fix with, for that would be just to create this face and then select the outer edge. Or maybe not. I 
I could just do this as well. There you go. Keep it as it is for now. There you go, it works. Just give us some loop cuts here for when we need them. Also gonna quickly carve this out. Also for this operation, I just press Control Alt Shift S to skew. And I'm kind of just thinking that the uh, this barrel bit, the, the the top part of the slide is a bit too high, so I might just lower it a tiny bit. And that should be fine. Okay, this is a bit of a tricky, tricky little bit. As you can see, it's quite curved towards the back. Not a huge fan of the scan the shape, but I'm sure we can figure something out. I'm just gonna quickly add these cuts here. Okay, so we have this shape, and we should be able to extrude this along the normals. It's fine if it goes up like that, not too much of a problem. Just make sure that the bottom part is as straight as it can be. Which it already is, which is good. And then kind of just adjust it slightly. Okay, looking at the uh, reference image here, you can see that the the cutout in the center of the back of the slide is almost as wide as the rear sight. Almost as wide as this bit here. 
so we can line it up the knife tool and remove this or we could also use a boolean to take this out but I don't really bother too much with them because this is also a relatively simple way of doing it Okay, so the basic block out shape for the slide is done. Now we can move to the frame. Yeah, 26 should be fine. I will move this to the midpoint of this, uh, the circle here. Now I'll show you why I started with the slide first. Oops, that's <laughs> that's not meant to happen. Um, hold on. So why we started with the slide first is to get the shape of this under bit here, which now we can match it to the uh, the shape of the frame here. Also nearly half of it because we will mirror this. Enable clipping, and there you go. Here's the shape of this. The slide should overlap the frame a, a tiny bit. We could move it in a bit more like this, but I don't know if we should. Uh, keep it as it is. Now for this curved bit, I will just extrude and rotate slightly to align it to the shape. You can of course add more resolution to this. So we're going to try align this with the cut here, and then continue with the, the outer trigger bit. We could also cheat the system a little bit by doing this. So align it with this bit here, and then we can align this bit here. Now as you can see the line uh, 
of edges that's created here. If we align it with this edge and this edge, and if we hit Control B, it should give us roughly the uh, a, a very rough uh, version of the uh, of the curve. But sometimes it is better to just do it manually. Also, you would also want to try to always keep the uh, the normal of the shape of these little shapes here facing into the in or out of the curve. So, for example, you see how these edges kind of face inwards. It's to uh, help with the uh, what's it called better uh, topology flow for the high poly especially. So you don't want stuff like this where it's kind of curved like that. Obviously, that's very drastic and you know very visual but you you want to keep that to a minimum if you can Because this bit is relatively flat, we can just pretty much copy the shape of uh, the curve we already followed. Or we could select all the uh, edges and extrude them inwards like that. But, I don't know, I prefer, I prefer it this way. It's quicker in a way. You don't have to go back in and readjust the, uh, the vertices later on. Bit of a lazy way, I guess. Okay, now, now that we have these, we can just create a face between them. Now, as you can see, this little uh, cutout we're going to ignore for now. I'm going to try to follow roughly where I think the uh, the curvature is. We're gonna add the cutout afterwards. Now we can select all the inner edge, extrude inwards. As you can see, there's still a bit of a curvature inwards as well, so we need to add that. Could extrude along normals again. And then try to match the curve. I, th I think this looks okay. Topology isn't really too equal, but it doesn't matter too much. We will let the high poly deal with that. As I said before, triangles don't matter too much. We can just do that. Easy peasy. And now we're going to do this part of the frame. Which it's the same shape here. We can just literally duplicate it over. Align it and extrude it.
and as you can see it's it's uh, it's a bit of a bulgy shape so it'll be a little bit awkward to to capture that but it shouldn't be too difficult let's hope All right, so the curve starts around this one here. Actually, we could just simplify the shape real quick and add a bevel like this. And then quickly adjust, well, first of all, remove the face here. And then adjust the vert so it fits the shape better. a bit too sharp this this bit this area here which I think I'll have to come back to and touch up a bit later which isn't huge not not a huge problem but it will be a problem later down the line Okay, then with the outer edge selected here, we're just going to double tap G. A couple times to slide it into a rough curvature shape. Now, I don't want to add a loop cut across the entire mesh, so I will, I will just remove uh, the faces here so it doesn't flow over. Okay, the bolt shape is kind of captured. I think it looks fine, although this is a bit of a mess here. It's what happens in tight areas. Where there's not enough space for the, uh, the vertices to move around. And then, same bit here, it does have some slight curvature on the inside as well. Let's see if we can find it, yep. There's a, a, a slight bulge here as well. Just gonna quickly add the, uh, the slide rails on the frame. We're gonna guesstimate the size of it, doesn't matter too much because we're not really gonna go into too much detail here. You can see it goes about that high. And using the reference, we can guesstimate how much it goes inwards, which isn't much, but I'm just going to eyeball it.
Yeah, we did kind of forget to add the uh, the bulge here, so we can quickly do that. Okay, whilst we're working on the frame, we can add the trigger, which is not a complex shape at all. All right, let's block out some uh, quick secondary details. In this case, we do the, uh, the cutout here. Now it does have some sort of curvature inwards, so we can add a hoop cut down the middle. The high poly will take care of most of the shading here. It should look fine, although if we wanted we could add a bit of a bevel here. Okay, and now for the slide, we can actually try uh, the injection port, which looks a little complex. So we'll do it from this side first. Now 
Now we need to disable the mirror modifier in this case, so that we can work on the other side without affecting the the left side. Okay, now that we have the shape cut out, we can extrude inwards. Looking at the reference, uh, most majority of this is just goes straight down, other than the side of the uh, the slide where it goes inwards from the side. Right, before I move on with the uh, the shape of the slide, I want to get the barrel done as well. To make sure that the slide wraps around the barrel correctly. Okay, as we can see here, it's kind of cut out at an angle, for some reason. 
So we can follow that as well. All right, earlier I forgot to mention we can enable matcap for modeling. This should help us see details better. I prefer to use this one. We can also enable screen space cavity to really push out the, uh, the shapes. All right, let's finish the slide off.
Before I fully dedicate to the inside of the slide, I will quickly uh, cut out the uh, the slide rails. The simplest way to do that is just duplicate and separate the the shape. Apply mirror modifier. Make it flat and extrude inwards as far as you need it to go. Make sure the normals are facing correctly and scale up slightly so that it's not perfectly in touch with the, the actual frame. Now with the mesh selected we can press Ctrl F and Boolean.
Alright, that was a bit of a pain to fix up, but it's finished. There are some misalignments, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Besides, you won't see this part anyway. But if you wanted to get this accurate, uh, somewhat realistic, then you could always use blueprints and actual mi uh, milling plans to get the correct shape that you want. But in our case, it, it's absolutely fine. As you can see, you can't even see it. You can see the rails here, how they're supposed to be. Although these would need some adjusting, I think. Alright, since the slide is essentially finished, we can uh, pull the block out of it. We can now add the larger details, such as this, these two cuts here. Right now that we have the cut shapes, we can select the cut shape and select this uh, the main shape and control numpad minus to create a, a boolean cut. We kind of went in too deep over here, so we need, need to move it out a little bit. And yeah, that's another way you can do a boolean. And then get a little bit of a clean up. 